This is Speedlag, aka Adam Birch. I'm an animator and filmmaker. Thanks for watching this After Effects Advanced Rig Overview video. I'll be talking about this rig here that I built for a personal film. It's a fully two-dimensional rig built out of shape layers and masks. It's rigged using a pretty tricky combination of BQ head rig, joysticks and sliders, and of course, Duick. This isn't really a tutorial, but I'll talk about how these tools helped me to build this rig and create the 3D effect that I wanted. And I'll get into how I prioritize certain elements of this rig to keep my project file as streamlined as possible. So let's get into it. All right, we'll start here. This is some of the previs that I did before I actually got into rigging this character. I wanted to make sure that I could have a pretty decent understanding of the sort of volume that she would have from the different angles and what sort of movement she'd be capable of. So just like a, in 3D rendering, you want to figure out how they look from different angles. So I illustrated her in this back, front, and side view. And then to prep her for After Effects, I broke those out into individual pieces. So here we have her right and left leg, her arms, her torso kind of broken into pieces. This isn't all of it, but just so you can kind of give an idea. Uh, her backpack and then her hands, which are a lot more complex than this. Um, you can kind of see the, the pieces here, uh, but they're, they're, they're quite a bit more than that in After Effects. And when we get over into that, you can, you can see that. And of course, all of this is subject to change. When you get into After Effects, there's a lot of surprises that'll pop up that you just kind of have to adjust for. And uh, we'll cover some of that now. So here we are watching the rig animating in After Effects. It's not a fully robust rig. You can see here in the shoulder and down here around the elbow that it kind of breaks and spoils the illusion. That's the sort of thing that before final output, I'd probably come in and do some additional cleanup to really pull the whole thing together. For the most part, I'm able to get some pretty interesting animation just using the rig. So, for instance, this little controller right here, if you look at this back shoulder, it's behind the torso when I move it over here. But if I move the controller the other direction, the shoulder comes out in front. You also see there's a lot of things that animate with it. For instance, the, the head changes its position and the top of the top of the torso here where the helmet connects to it moves with it too it's kind of neat and down here the hand has kind of similar controls where with this I can rotate it about 180 degrees and it's not super robust like I can't with this hand I can't just grab items or or get any really dexterous movement but it it's for a passive piece you can get some really interesting results um, also due to these controls that I have over here which are really just kind of rotational controls on individual fingers and parts of the wrist the real chronic jewel of this rig though is the the head which is uh, again a fully two-dimensional a fully two-dimensional rig and it's something I was able to pull off because of this pretty cool little plugin called joysticks and sliders which is available on aescripts.com and it's pretty um, inexpensive so I definitely recommend checking it out if you kind of like the results that you see here but I can get take what's essentially just animated masks and get a pretty neat 3D effect here on the head. Um, and that's all being controlled by this one control right here. So if I drag it around, you can see that everything updates. You get the, the back of the hair updates, it parallaxes to one direction while the, the hair in the front and everything in between, like her ears and her nose, all move accordingly. And then I also have additional controls that move with it too, like uh, like her bangs. So if her head turns really quick, you can get a neat effect there. And then I also have, get really close here. It looks like it's low quality, but um, 
when we jump into the 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 head rig itself you'll get a better idea of how everything looks this is just this composition is pretty small but the lash is uh I have little lash controls here too so when she blinks I can get some additional movement on that which is kind of cool I can also make her eyes blink and these are all features I'll cover next And now we're inside the head rig composition where a lot of the joysticks and sliders rigging took place. You can see that everything's being controlled kind of like in the other composition by this one controller. And that controller is actually being driven by the, the main rigging composition. So I have all my controllers in one place. And this is really kind of a neat way to see exactly what's going on, how many different layers are at play and how they're working together and how they're moving to create that volumetric feeling. This next step is what I had to do to make joysticks and sliders work as well as it did for me. If you've used it before, this will make a lot of sense. If you haven't used it before, this is still probably going to make a lot of sense. Essentially, when you rig with joysticks and sliders, you have to create some key poses, an origin, a right pose, a left pose, an up pose, and a down. Finding these is the hard part. Once you have them, they're all controlled by the single controller, and you can get some pretty robust results. If I click on any of these, you can see the decisions that I made. Up, down, left, and right. Same for this. There's a lot of going back and forth to get it to, to get just the right results. Having a good understanding of the volume of your character and the proportion between different features like the eyes to the ears and how they just move in space, the amount of perspective that you lose from turning left and right, all that is really important to getting it to look really three-dimensional. The neat thing about joysticks and sliders is it can also control pretty much anything that can be keyframed. So for instance, I used it on CC Bend It, which is just an effect that I put on this bang. So it would follow the bang as it moved between these different positions. And then that gave me the ability to bend this bang anytime that I wanted to with a, another controller in my main composition. Next, I'm going to cover the glove and its rigging. It doesn't use any joysticks and sliders. It actually uses BQ head rig to get the turn uh, right here. Boop. And then some pretty simple parenting expressions. Most of that rigging takes place here inside its own individual composition. You can see this controller right here is controlling the rotation, that 180 degree rotation that I talked about. Just scrub through it. And if I disconnect, it's connected to the, uh, the, the main animation composition. Now if I disconnect it, you can see that it's the same controller. Take all these layers, lower the opacity. You can see how they interact, just like that. And again, this is BQ head rig. It's a pretty great, it's a pretty great plugin. I like it because it is very responsive. It moves quickly. You can see that I can get a very real time response. It's one of the upsides to it, but you can't really do much for up and down. It's just really great for, for rotational things. And then that parenting I talked about, it, here's an example of that, where this is just a puppet tool 
control, you can rotate it, um, and then everything moves along with that. And here for each finger, they kind of have their own individual bend effect. And so all of these simple little controls, like here, here's a little bend. Those are controlled all by this one controller right here. So all of these expression sliders are just controlling everything inside that one composition. I should probably zoom in and show that. That's really about it. It's not much more complex than that. The other hand is the same way. I'm going to end this rig overview with a quick peek inside another After Effects project. Here I'm using the same head rig, but I have it on a different body rig. I kind of wanted to show that although it might take a long time to create a really robust head rig, it becomes a really useful asset that you can use in any number of shots following with the same character. So with that, thank you for watching. This rig really means a lot to me. I hope you learned something. I hope you found some inspiration for your personal work. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments below and I'll really do my best to answer them. Otherwise, you can find me on Instagram at speedlag. My website is speedlag.com. And uh, yeah, till next time.